Hey everyone, Jared here from Gearhead Grind. Looking to make another video for you, just a very quick how-to on some things regarding the Can-Am Maverick X3 clutch cover, or the belt housing cover, I should say. Um, we're gonna do the quick release pins for that and show you just some quick tips that I have after doing quite a few of these, as well as installing the aluminum liner that goes in. And in the description, I'll link to the liner that I use that's reasonably priced and seems to fit really well every time for me. Um, so let's get to it real quick. I don't want to take too much time. This is meant to just help anyone who may be stuck looking for some quick tips or whatever it is. And on this one, it's particularly easy because the whole housing for the belt and the clutches is out of the car. I'll show you real quick what the customer went through and why we're installing the liners on his vehicles. Uh, he has two Can-Ams that we basically do equal builds on. Um, so let me just flip this around and show you. So this is the um, belt housing cover. So the primary clutch goes here, the secondary clutch goes here when it's in the car. So we removed those, pulled this out because he had a catastrophic belt failure. He ran these stock belts um, basically until it failed and it blew a huge hole in his housing here. Uh, he then had a good little desert or, you know, dune fix where he took a bit of a sign and basically duct taped it in place to seal this up to try to keep some sand out. Um, but of course, when the car came back, we're going to do the correct fix. So we got this off. It did have the quick pins in here already. So we're taking those out and transferring them over to the new one. So getting to that, uh, let's get these off of there. Um, basically we're using the, the same housing. So the outside cover of the belt slash clutch, clutches is unharmed. Uh, and since we had already installed the clutch pins, you can see the little cotter pins here around the side. So that's basically how I install these is I drill a little hole in the ribbing here and rivet in the stainless steel, uh, wire with the cotter pins for those. Um, so that part's super easy, nothing specific there. Just pick a good spot to drill in and uh, some, get some rivets in. You will need, of course, a rivet gun. Just a hand one's fine. These are really easy little aluminum rivets. And what I also do is some of these are not really tight or properly crimped from the factory. So typically I'll take each of these little crimpings and just hit it with a hammer on the vise. You know, like just put it on the flat top of the vise here and just whack it with a hammer just to make sure they're sealed because I have had these come apart before, whether from the more expensive kits or the typical Amazon ones. As far as the housing is concerned, here we have the new belt slash clutch housing and we are putting a liner in it. So for anyone that's done these liners before or doing it for, for the first time, uh, you may know it. some of them probably can be pretty difficult. This one, which I mentioned, I'll link below. I got from a company, I've got a couple of them from them and they seem to work really well. If done correctly, I still need to do some final alignment here, but basically it does not require any trimming. It does come with the hardware and everything lines up pretty well in here and provides some good protection. So that way, you know, right here, he lost this whole section. So it's gonna provide additional impact protection against a belt failure and hopefully prevent this whole housing from failing. So what I did to install this is, well, first I installed all the pins around the side. Um, the ordering doesn't matter. That just happened to be what I did first. So basically each of these little quick release pins has a hole in it for the cotter pin and then a kind of like a screw system there. All right, so what I'll do to install these pins, especially if it's out of the vehicle like this, which makes it substantially easier, is I'll basically put the top three eighths or so of the pin in the drill and tighten it down. You really wanna to crank that down so it doesn't spin in the drill itself. And then you can just have your drill in a, the low setting and drive it in slowly and making sure it's really straight because you don't want to cause any damage to the holes that are in your housing here because that's going to definitely cause you some problems. You can put these in by hand, but it's not super fun. Um, basically what that involves is getting something to put through the hole or a special tool that tightens onto these and gives you some leverage to put them in. Um, basically what I do is I'll get started with the drill and then I will put the the cover on to make sure all the pins are aligned and then I'll check the height of them. You want to be able to put the cotter pins through the holes 
and still have it compress the cover slightly. So you don't want it too loose and you don't want it too tight. If it's too tight, you really have to struggle to press everything together when you're installing it or if you're doing a belt change and it makes it kind of a pain for yourself or the customer. But you still want some pressure on here to create a seal with this foam to prevent sand or dirt, mud, all that from getting into your belt housing here. Um, so yeah, basically you just get each one of these down. I mark them if I need to loosen them or tighten them a little bit to get them all straight. And ideally I have the holes facing basically parallel to the outside cover here, because if they're going into the cover, sometimes there can be interference. So typically with maybe an exception or two, it's easiest to install them when it's on the car. If your holes are basically lined up. So the cotter pin goes through like this, as far as installing the liner here, I picked, or I tend to pick this hole to line up because it's the, the real like complete hole here uh, that you wanna make sure to get aligned as best as possible. And I'll use a series, I have four of these clamps that I'll basically use to get it aligned and I'll drill one hole and get a bolt through and then start playing with the alignment, but essentially make it so that you have an equal lip here all the way around the outside, but also everything is lined up so right here, it's actually a nice smooth transition and making sure that there's no gap between the aluminum and the housing itself. So you're clamping around and then drilling the next hole. You don't even have to do two at the same time. You can see I haven't even finished here. So I'll do one and kind of bolt it together. And then you can start moving your clamps around and you just want to work your way around, making sure that there's no gaps here. You can see it's sealed all the way. And if you do it correctly, and if you're using a manufacturer that does it right, um, you can see it's not perfectly lined up. I could have done a slightly better job here, but I didn't have to trim this at all, which is really nice. I didn't have to take it out once I bolted it in. Um, so everything went pretty smooth there. So I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this up, put in all the remaining bolts. And um, like I said, this one comes with hardware. So it has these little bolts here with the, there we go, the angled head that fits in and some little eight millimeter nuts. So that way when they're in, it creates a, a nice flush or even slightly recessed fitment here. So nothing's gonna get caught on it. Well, that's it for now. I'm gonna get this wrapped up and get everything back installed in the car. I may make a separate video for that um, as well as how to remove the clutch. So take a look out for that and uh, we'll go from there. All right, everyone, thanks for watching. Hopefully this helps somebody out who's either doing that liner on the, the housing or the quick release pins. Uh, done a few of them now, although it's not something I've done hundreds of, but definitely enough to learn and develop some tips. Hopefully that helped. Um, so feel free to share any feedback, any tips that you've learned. You know, I'm always open to learning new things as well. Um, so anything in the comments or any other mods that you think should be done to the housing or something like that on the clutch. Uh, I've got at least another tip or trick on some cool little parts that can save a lot of time should you need to share or should you need to change the belt housing um, that I'll put in another video. But uh, yeah, I know everyone says this and of course it's the basis of YouTube, but please like the video if it helped you out, subscribe or share any feedback with me. Thanks for checking it out again for watching another Gearhead Grind video and check back. I'll be posting a lot more stuff on how to work on these K&Ms and just tips that I've picked up over time. Thanks, everyone. Bye.